Shanghai will start easing its lockdown restrictions uh, in the area today, even with a record number of COVID-19 cases. The city has been shut down in an effort to stop the virus from spreading. The government is grouping each area into three risk categories. So people in sections that haven't had a case in two weeks will be able to move around uh, their neighborhoods, but they must social distance and they could go back to, into lockdown if there are any new cases. Here in the U.S., COVID-19 cases are starting to rise. The Northeast is seeing the biggest uptick right now, and the Omicron subvariant BA2 is the dominant strain. But the numbers are still well below what we saw during the winter Omicron surge. So I want to bring in Dr. David Agus to dig into what all of these numbers mean. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, doctor, I don't know. I don't know, Vlad, if you feel like this, too. It just feels like increasingly we're hearing about people testing positive. And I know, you know, we had this whole thing happening in D.C., but I don't know. People I know seem to be testing mm -hmm. positive, whereas they didn't before. The mayor of New York City. Right, Eric just tested Adams. positive. So it's hard to determine just what these numbers mean, doctor. Um, is, is BA2 really to blame for the rise that we're seeing? Definitely. So, you know, we have made a decision in this country, and I think it's the right decision to live with the virus rather than hide from it. And what we're seeing is a significant rise in BA.2, but with the underlying 65 plus who are vaccinated in the country, as well as natural immunity from the earlier Omicron cases, we're protected. And there are very few upticks in hospitalizations across the country. And if you have medical conditions and there's a breakthrough, we do have Paxlovid, which is the breakthrough pill for five days, which blocks hospitalization. So the two of those together, we're basically saying let it ride and we will accept some virus infections, many people you might know, in return for no hospitalizations and going back to a new normal. Yeah, that, that's an important detail, uh, Dr. Agus, and I'm glad that you pointed it out because I know that there will be some people who will hear these reports, they'll hear you, they'll hear uh, Dr. Anish Jha, and I'm going to play a little bit of what he told us this morning on CBS Mornings, and they'll say, oh, you're pushing the goal uh, marks or, you know, you, the science has changed. You told us that, you know, we had to lock down in, uh, so that we would not be infected with COVID-19. Now you're saying we can uh, accept a certain level of infections, but that's because things have changed. We're no longer in the same situation that we were in back in March of 2020. We have these vaccines. We have these uh, drugs. So, and now we have these second boosters that have been approved for older Americans and people who are immunocompromised. And as you know, we just indicated the new White House COVID-19 response coordinator, Dr. Anish Jha, was on CBS Mornings earlier talking about whether everyone else will need that second booster. I want to play a bit of what he told us. People over 60 should get a booster. I think that part's pretty clear. 50 to 59, if you have risk factors, reasonable. Under 50, we just don't have any data. We always want to be guided on, by data on these things. He said that there is no data. Uh, given, though, the risk, the one question I do have, Dr. Agus, and, and Dr. Ja, uh, just like you, uh, also said that uh, the BA2 is not concerning because infections are not, uh, hospitalizations are not rising. But I do wonder about long COVID. That is still kind of a sort of a black hole, mm -hmm. nebulous area. I mean, people are saying, look, we're eventually everybody's going to get it. But I'm still of the mindset that, well, I may not go to the hospital, but what will I be like in a year or two years or five years from now? It's an important issue that you bring up. First of all, calling 50 plus older Americans, Vlad, that's a little bit you know, kind of scary right there. I know. I, don't, I hate um, to hear myself say that because I'm in that category. <laughs> so to people who have not had a vaccine or had a long time ago exposure, getting COVID-19 has a significant risk of long COVID. And that's real. And long COVID is something while we can't measure it, We've seen it, um, and it can affect people's lives for many years. We don't know how long because we just haven't been able to study it that long. Um, if you've had a vaccine, particularly recently in a booster, the risk of long COVID is dramatically, and I say dramatically, lower. Mm. And that's really the case for these booster shots. So 50 and above are eligible now for a booster shot if you're four-plus month out from your last shot, your last booster, a second booster. We know from data from several European countries in Israel that it dramatically increases immunity for a short period will have a significant effect on infection, but long term will have a major effect on hospitalizations and serious illness. So to me, it's kind of a no brainer. I got mine on Friday, my second booster, because I am in that what Vlad calls older American category. <laughs> um, and, and I think it's important that we all consider it, especially when we look at our risk factors and our lifestyle. Um, increasing immunity is a powerful thing. 
Yeah, it's super annoying. I used to be the demo that the every, all the advertisers wanted to hit. I was always proud. I'm in that demo. You're in that demo. I'm slowly, I think, edging my way no, towards no, out no. of that demo. <laughs> where they're like, yeah, we don't care about what he has to say, but where he spends his money. <laughs> Dr. Egg, it's always good to talk to you, my friend. Thank you very much.